Hey guys, welcome to a new video, and uh, this is going to be a new series I'm going to start up. So yeah, recently I started getting into 35mm film. So here's the deal, um, this is the camera I've been filming on my channel, it's the Sony A6500. To tell you the truth, I really didn't know how to do exposures and I didn't know how to do like filming on this thing, <laughs> you know, like I didn't know how to adjust the settings, the lighting, the ISO and all that stuff uh, until I got into 35 millimeter film camera. So uh, it's helped me out a lot and uh, you guys can see it in my videos. You know, a lot of the, the footage are like blown out. They're so bright and it doesn't look good. <laughs> this is a uh, Canonette made by Canon, the QL17. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you guys um, everything you need to know about you know getting into 35 millimeter film and you see i have like three analog cameras right here and all these three cameras um they made the top 10 list of um, beginner cameras and you guys pretty much notice they all look pretty much similar you know these cameras were made in like 1970s or somewhere around there they have a very nice look to it um one of the most popular cameras the leica camera which is way too expensive but this one looks the closest to it this is the olympus om1 and I want to say this is one of the most popular beginner cameras. Uh, the style of it looks so nice. Uh, it has a little filter lens right here. Yeah, I want to say this is one of the most popular one. I love how this one looks. Next up, the Pentax K1000. That's how it looks. You know, it looks similar to that. But you'll notice some features that this one, the Pentax, doesn't have compared to the Olympus. And I'll talk about that. And then this Canonet QL17 is also a popular camera. And it's different from these two because this is a rangefinder camera. So I'll also talk about what the difference is with this rangefinder compared to these two. I'm going to tell you guys right now, my favorite one, the Pentax wins. Uh, if you're going to start out with a beginner camera, do the Pentax K1000. You want a camera when you're starting off to be easy and for everything to work, including the light meter. There's a light meter in this, and that shows you how to take your pictures correctly with the right amount of light. So I'll cover that in a minute. But why did I choose this over these other ones? This one looks the best. I want to say like I like the way this looks out of all these, but the light meter doesn't work on this. And I feel like this is the most durable and most trustworthy camera that everything on it works. So that's the only problem with this. Like, I think if the light meter worked on this, I would love it. But also, the grip on this. The way I hold it, it's like, it's kind of hard when I'm starting off compared to this one, even though it's like, look, it's a little bit taller like that, but it has more room and I grip it better when I'm taking photos. And it's just helping me learn it more um, easier. Okay, here's the first thing. All right, so these two cameras, I have film loaded in them already. So I'm going to use this as an example because I don't have film loaded in this and I can wind it right now. I can, I can snap it. So nothing will happen. And um, when you're first buying a camera, make sure you test that out. Make sure you test out this winding to make sure the film winds, you know, make sure it sounds good when you click it. So to adjust the uh, ISO on this, I have to adjust using this. I have to push in and the ISO shows up here. And that's how I can see that I'm adjusting the ISO. So what you want to do is we want to adjust that and make sure everything is like working on that. So uh, do this when you're testing out a used camera, you know, put this shutter on like 500 here and then wind it and click. Make sure it sounds solid. And then go to like 125, wind it click and then do like 30 wind it click and then as you're getting lower here to like b is for bulb so as you're going lower here let's say i go to four watch when i wind this and then when i click it it's going to take more time you're going to hear it you hear that see it's like it's taking longer to hold the lens open for more light to come in so you want to hear that snap because if you don't hear it close then there's something wrong with it so you you want to test out all these modes see how that sounds different now i'm gonna go back to four see how it sounds longer and then eight here see that 15 16 and then this thing right here, you want to test and make sure that the film is going to load. So all of the cameras have this, you see up here, they have that. 
they'll have this right here. You pull this thing up, you pull that tab up, yank that up, and then you gotta pull it again. Let's see how this opens. And then that's how it looks like. A uh, little film in here. This is a special one that um, came out, one of the first, I guess, that came out with this special film loading, where you just put film in here, close it, and it loads very, very easily. But yeah, you gotta load film in there, and then you can like wind it to see how it works. And make sure all the gears are moving. And that's what you gotta look out for when buying these old cameras. But most of them, they're working. It's like, um, it's gonna be very rare that it doesn't load. Another thing to look out for is light leaks. Um, when they talk about light leaks on here, it's talking about light leaking through the sides here on these edges. And so uh, these cameras, all of them are, are the same pretty much. If you look in the grooves here, there's these like little padding. And those can be replaced and fixed on your own. Or you can buy kits on eBay. And they, they give you these little padding that you um, you got to scrape out the old stuff and you put in uh, you put it all in here and it's like a little sticky thing and it, it sticks together inside. But most of them, they're like on the side here, on the bottom, then on the side. And then maybe like on this side or something. And then when it closes, it, you know, it keeps it like dark in there. So it closes up all the light. And, but that's how you can tell. You can look in here, you can see. But I was lucky enough um, for all the three of these cameras, it, it doesn't have any light leaks they're all fixed or you know it's it's been kept up or so uh, another important thing to look for is uh, if it says this viewfinder is clear when you look through it because some of it will say like it's foggy or it has too many like things in them so uh, you want to make sure the lens are clean and I made sure that I looked at every single photo closely to to see how clear the lens was all right so what I'll do right now is I'm gonna load film into this and I'm, I'm gonna show you how it's done so this is how a film looks like. This is an old film that I'm gonna use and I don't care about it. I'm, not, I'm never gonna develop this. So here's the thing about film. Uh, go to CVS and buy them. You know, if you go on eBay, they might be expired film, but they, you know, they are cheaper. Uh, even though my CVS that I bought it at, I bought this Fuji one. It came in like three rolls of these. And I think it was just like eight bucks or something. It was very cheap. So go to your local CVS. And this is the Fuji Color Superior Extra 400, 36 exposures. So when you're a beginner, just start off with 400. Or 100 is fine too, but I wanna say 400 because here's the thing. These are the three main ones that you're, you're, you're gonna buy. 100 is for when it's very bright outside, it's very sunny. Then like, you know, you wanna take this out on a sunny day. 400, you can still do sunny day, but it can also let you do nighttime because you know it's in between 800 is really for nighttime if anything you know just go for these two at, at the beginning unless you're into nighttime photography then try the 800 so yeah this was at uh, cvs that i bought it at very cheap still and um it has the expiration date on it i don't think this thing is going to expire until like 2022 or 2023 you know so you know if you buy at a store you're going to get quality film and I know that this film is going to come out good. So the um, popular one that a lot of people are buying right now is the Portra though. The Portra, um, here's the 400. I was shooting on 400 for a while, for a lot. And I like this one a lot. Kodak Portra 400. But this one here, these are expired film. Um, I had someone give me this. They didn't want it anymore. They're like, this is probably expired. It's not going to work anymore. But look, they're 800. And then look at the exposures on these. It's only like 24 um, film exposures. So... Um, these one have a lot more. They're like 36, right? That means like 36 shots. Uh, this one I can get 24 shots out of it. So I'm just going to waste this one. I'm never going to develop it. So to load film, lift this thing up. Pull it up like that. Pops open. Look at this um, film. I was looking at this groove on how it, it, it moved, right? You don't want that to be on the back here. So you don't want it to be behind. You want it to be in front. So if you don't know which way, just always make sure the film is on front here so that when you pull it, it's gonna go, see how it's, it curls too? It has to be up in front here. So this point points down for this case. So, um, you know, like you wanna make sure this thing is lifted up and put in like that. If it doesn't go in right away, just make sure you pull on this, pull it all the way up so that it can go in. Then let it down and snap this in. So you make sure that goes in. 
right? And then this here, hold this down like that. And since this one has a special film loading, all I have to do is I, I just have to pull this film until it goes to the orange line there. And then I can just close this, but see how I'm holding this down to make sure it goes in because um, when film loads, you see this groove here, you want uh, those tabs to go into the holes here. And that's what grips it on. That's what grips the film so that it can load. So this one has a special mechanism where I just close like that. But for the other films, they have like a, um, a line in here with a hole. Put that into the, the hole grooves. And what you do is like you stick that in, right? And then you get it in there until it like it's snug. And you do the same thing. You hold this down and then you put, you align it. Once this thing is like snug in, you align this until it goes into the groove here of the film loading. And uh, you don't have to close this right away. You can wind it as you're doing this, see? Wind it, snap a shot. And you're gonna see right here that it's gripping on. So I'll, I'll wind it again here. See, then I know it's like, all right, it's loaded. It's, uh, it's winding. Then I can close it, snap a shot. And then um, for this one, when I'm winding and loading it, look, this thing is gonna move. See, that moves and also this moves. Watch, see, and watch. See, I can't pull anymore. Once you wind, it goes. But um, that's gonna move as you wind it. See, I go like that. After you load your film, since this is 800, you look at the, the number 800, right? adjust this right here you got to adjust your um your iso my iso is on here and i have to adjust it to 800 that's the film speed or film rating it's called the film speed of it so that always has to be at 800 and then you have to adjust the shutter to the closest amount which is only this one only goes to 500 and um, that's the important thing about loading film. All right, so let's say if I loaded up 400, right? This portrait 400. Then I would set the ISO to 400. And then this film speed will still be at 500. It's like the next one up from it. So um, not 250, it has to be 500. If I loaded 100, Hector 100, I set the ISO to 100. And then I set this at 125. You can also do 100 if you have a setting, but 125 is recommended. So you see, it's always like the closest number to it. To take out your film when you're done, after you go to the end and this thing doesn't uh, advance anymore, all the cameras have like a release button down here. I gotta press that. Now that releases this lock on this. I can pull this up and I can wind the film back to the original state. So I wind this all the way and I can feel the friction on it. See, like I don't feel any more friction here. So I know it's done. Then I can pull this up, take it out and see the film is all in here. And then I just put this in here and I can take it to go and get developed. So there's online places to develop your film, but I really suggest finding a local place to go to. I go to a local place to develop my film, and this is what they give back to me. They, um, I went to different two different places, right? One of them gave me back this whole film roll. See, like, they didn't cut it for me. They just gave me back the whole negative. And if you go to a local place to develop, they're always going to give you back your negatives because you want these. These are like your master copy because... You can always get these redeveloped and create um, photos out of them at better quality or any quality you want, adjust the color on them and all that. Now, all of those places that you go to, even CVS and all that, they ship it out online and they will not return your negatives. And the local ones are like, just look for a photography shop that does wedding photos or um, they'll do like, um, you know, family portraits, something like that. A lot of them, they'll do um, film processing. And there's some places that will do one hour photo processing, right? This place that I go to locally, they took uh, three days. It was very fast and they cut it up very nice for me. They gave me back the negatives. 
and they had two options where they said they can burn it to a CD for me or they can upload it um, online for me. Um, one place did it on a Dropbox and they gave me access to the Dropbox. And then um, they also said they can email me a zip file. So it's all digital now. You can get it developed and all of the places will give you a digital copy. When you're a beginner, just get it processed as standard, you know, because the quality is just standard and good enough for web. Um, where you can upload to Facebook, Instagram, and all that. It looks perfect. It looks great. If there's anything in here that I like, I'll just go back to them and I'll tell them, hey, can you just, can you print this out for me? And then they'll be cheaper to just select if, um, if I can just select which one I want to print out. And then the rest of these are, I'm just going to post them on Instagram or whatever. All right, so I'm going to talk about range finder versus anal like these to other analog cameras. Um, I'm gonna talk about the difference and why I suggest going for these two and not a range finder when you're a beginner. And um, I don't know, some of you guys might disagree on this, but you know, I'm a beginner on it and this camera was very hard for me to use. I feel like you gotta be a little bit more pro to use it. And um, I do like this one a lot. I love the way it looks and I love how compact it is. It's so small. And um, yeah, like this is a great camera, but here's the problem that I had. With these two cameras here, I can look through the viewfinder and when I focus, I can see, you know, if I have this in front of me, I can, I can make this very clear and see the ba background as blurry. Or if I, I can like adjust the focus to be very clear in the back and have the, the front blurry and all that, you know? It's a lot easier with these to focus and look at the range on this. Like you can go all the way out, you can go all the way in. Um, on the focusing and it was it was exactly how how I saw it through the viewfinder whatever was out of focus That's how it looked like whatever was in focus. That's how it looked like but the rangefinder is different <laughs> this camera has a, a little square in the middle and That is the thing that focus that shows you your focus and so like it has the split image and what it did was like um, things will look like split it has like two different images and it's all like blurry and split but and that's only for the square that's in the middle everything on the outside looked clear and so i i didn't understand that and so when i, I was taking photos with this i was looking on the on the sides and everything looked clear and i was just snapping away but it was becoming blurry i'll show you guys photos for um with this camera here and look at this focus ring it's very short it gives you like i think most rangefinder cameras that's how it is it's just a very short focusing I had to keep on looking at the middle square to focus and you got to align it, the focusing where it just goes into place. It aligns into place and everything looks clear, but only for the middle square. And that was just difficult for me to do um, as a beginner. And so I had a lot of blurry photos. I, I just didn't know how to do it. So the other very important issue for um, beginners is uh, how to know how to expose, right? and. These cameras have a light meter in all of them. They have this little needle. So um, you can look to the left of the, um, the camera, the left or the right, and they always have like this needle. It's, it's always gonna be either point up or down, but you gotta adjust the needle where it just goes right into the middle. You don't want it to go up because that means it has too much light. It's gonna be overexposed. You want the needle to go right in the middle and then um, if you, the meter is way too low, that means it's gonna be too dark and it's underexposed. So that's how you properly expose something because when you're looking through this and you're adjusting um, based on the aperture and the shutter here, you're not gonna see it getting dark in here or getting brighter. This is just a very clear lens, daytime. Um, you're gonna see exactly how it sees through the lens, but as you're adjusting this, it doesn't get darker or lighter. That's where you need the light meter. So you have to look in there for the light meter. And this is the only one that has a working light meter. <laughs> and that's also what made it difficult with this range finder. The light meter didn't work. And so I was having very difficult time with light and, um, and focusing. If the light meter doesn't work, get out your phone and download a free light meter app. Uh, there's a bunch of them. I have two of them on my phone. So yeah, I have that light meter, that light meter. This is how it looks like right here. When you open up a light meter, but yeah, get a light meter and it'll show you exactly what settings you need to have it on. Um, you're always going to lock the ISO in you know, um, on what it needs to be at. And then you're just changing these. So this Canonet camera right here um, is different. It has this little compartment here. You open it up. 
uh, you're gonna notice that a lot of the batteries they, they sell now, um, they don't fit these cameras. These are hearing aid batteries. You see how this is called Zinc Air? And it's 1.4 volts. So the old batteries were 1.3, I think. And these are hearing aid batteries. And just look for the number uh, 675. And then if you're not sure, you can always just Google like Canonet battery or Pentax K1000 battery. And then it'll, it'll tell you what, um, what model to get or what number. And this one, they all use the 675 and Zinc Air 1.4. And the batteries are smaller. Um, the other ones are, the older ones were a little bit bigger. But they'll still fit and they'll still work. It goes in there like that. But I'll show you guys this Pentax one. Uh, see, it has the same battery compartment. Open it up down here. Like that. And you see, I'm using the smaller battery in here. And it still works. This one, the light meter works perfect. What I would recommend is buying these. You can go to CVS. I think CVS is probably the best place to find film and batteries. They have hearing aid batteries too. So the ones in store, they're quality um, batteries and that they're going to work for years, you know. This one I got off of eBay. I'm not sure how long this, <laughs> this one will work. I took a chance on it. And it wasn't even that much big of a difference with price. They're, they're really cheap still, you know. I think it was like four and this was like seven bucks. So... It's not even a big deal. And you know, I like Duracell, very good quality uh, batteries. And that's what's cool about these old analog cameras is that that's the only battery it needs for the light meter. This camera will keep on working for years and decades um, because it, it doesn't need a lithium battery or anything like my A6500. If that lithium battery dies on my Sony camera, I can't use the camera. These are analog cameras. You can keep winding these you know, it's all mechanical and boom, it'll just keep on taking a photo uh, without a battery. The battery is only for the light meter. So I can keep using these cameras, cameras forever unless something inside breaks. So here's another thing to know about these cameras. Uh, you notice like all the shutter buttons up here, they all look the same. You see how there's a hole on here? And see how it's all flat? Same thing with the Pentax here, there's a hole. And that's how it looks like with the shutter button, right? And then you see this one, how I have like a different shutter button here, right? And this is called like the hot shoe right here for the flashes. It's like a flash mount. And you notice I have this. These are just little um, attachment that I bought online to make it look nice, to make it look cool and stuff. People are making these customly, but like I can just take this off. See, they look the same. It's just, it's the same shutter button. This is just a little attachment I bought. And but I'll tell you guys what this hole is for here because I was confused on that at the beginning. I'm like, what, what, why do all these cameras have this hole on this button? And it's for this thing right here. This is a, um, th it's for nighttime photography pretty much because um, this thing will attach to here and it'll screw on. And then I, if I press this, it'll hold the shutter button down. And it's for night for time photography because I'm trying to let in more light, you know. So. You're gonna have this on a tripod so that you're not moving because when you're taking photos at night, you know, when you click like that, you're, you're moving the camera and then that's what makes things blurry. So you wanna have it on a tripod. You <laughs> attach this thing for nighttime photography. You can hold it open and then you can like close it. And it'll, it'll take a very clear photo at night and it'll create that light streaking effect too if cars go by because it has all this light going by but then everything scenic in the background is very clear and crisp. Okay, so one final thing on these cameras, the lens. This rangefinder camera, this lens isn't detachable. I can't remove this lens. And I think that's for most rangefinder cameras. You can't detach the lens. See this lens here? I can, I can detach this. So I, if I click in here, this is the Pentax K1000. Turn that and see the lens is detachable right there. Now to reattach it, you see the red dot? It's the same thing for um, the, the digital cameras. You just gotta align the red dot right there. Put it in like that. Oh, close that up until it clicks. And then you're good. Let me set this back. And same thing for the Olympus camera here. Uh, I think it's this button down here. So I hold that button in, twist this. There you go. The lens comes out like that. 
And then the same thing here, there's the two red dots here. I just gotta align it like that. And then turn into a clicks. The Olympus also has a timer right here. This is for the, the timer. Um, if I wind that down and then I wind the, um, the film loading, then as soon as I press the shutter button to click, the timer is going to go off until it goes all the way back up and then it's going to take a shot. The Canonet has a timer too and it's this button right here. So I'll show you the Canonet, how it works right now. So right up here, I'm going to wind it. Hear that? Now that's on a timer, I'm going to wind that. Then take a photo. See that? So that's how the timer works on these. This one doesn't have a timer. This Pentax one. Um, and you know, I, I think when you're doing beginner photography, you're not going to be using the timer. I, I don't even think I used it once. I'm always just pointing, adjusting, shooting. All right, guys, this has been a very long ass video. I'm going to stop here. But in a future video, I'll cover more of each one of these cameras. I'll show you some more shots. And uh, I'll be doing some street photography. I'll run out there. Uh, I'll show how I'm taking photos, what I'm learning. But this has been my beginner tips on this. Uh, leave a comment down below on what you're wondering about. Any questions you have, I'll try to help you guys out. And yeah, thumbs up. Leave some comments. Do what you gotta do. Peace out. See you later.